YouTube, it's Echo Bear, and today I want to view an ad for you guys that's called Talking Tongue Gold Run. Now, before I get into talking about this game and why it's kind of cute and interesting, let's get through the serious stuff. So, Talking Tongue Gold Run is made by Outfit7, and the age range they said that's appropriate for this is ages 4 plus. Now, I have one caveat to that, and also why I'm going to start mentioning this. It's because this game is in fact geared towards little kids, but it is slathered in microtransactions. So if you're a parent who's getting this game for their kids, make sure that your phone is password protected with purchases on the App Store or else the in-game purchases in this game can be phenomenal insanely quickly. And as far as genre goes, this is an infinite runner with upgrades available. So. Without further ado, let's get to it. So Talking Tom Gold Run is in the same vein of a lot of the infinite runners lately. It seems to kind of be the go-to template for these easy cash grab, very appealing to little kid type games. Also the origin of this is super weird too, because Talking Tom used to be, well still is, that little like fun early 2000s like yak back app where you talk to it and it talks back to you and it like poops and that's funny and stuff I guess. But they've made a huge game series out of this I guess because there's a Talking Tom, Talking Angela, and then there's dog version which is like Talking Hank and it's weird. That's a whole other genre of games I need to tackle at some point, but that's not today. So it takes those characters from those other games and puts them in an infinite rather where, where a little raccoon dude has stolen all of your gold, even though you live in a really run down house, and then runs off with it. But there's a rip in the bag, so you get to pretty much chase them, collect your gold back, and build your house bigger and better. So it's honestly a really, really cute premise to start out with. The controls are really snappy and really quite fun actually. It works a lot the same that original Temple Run did, where you can move left and right to dodge things you slide, swipe down, to duck under things, you swipe up to jump, and this one also has a cute little bonus feature of having a plane aspect of it and other power-ups. I'm gonna talk about the plane one first since that has controls. But pretty much the plane is just kind of a tiny little bonus level where you're in a plane yourself and you can move left and right and just collect a ton of gold as you're going. So the other things in this game along the line of power-ups are a helmet, a gold magnet, a two times gold multiplier, and other things like that. They are pretty handy and also pretty not handy at the same time, interestingly enough. They're handy because yeah, you get twice as much gold. Yeah, you get gold automatically drawn to you. But it's also a thing that you have to upgrade to make it even last long enough for it to really make a difference in the long run. The only one that's really worth it, for like straight from the get-go, is the two times gold one. And as soon as you get moved up to Angela, that gets a boost anyways. So that's the one where I pretty much just upgrade only because the others really aren't worth it. And as you continue through the game, it becomes more and more superfluous to even use the power-ups because it either just costs money, like real-world money or in-game money, to get any of those. So in the long run, it really may not be worth it. So as far as gameplay changing and differentiating as you progress through this game, it really doesn't. It's the same core game mechanics, character to character, it's just an aesthetic thing and a cute little way to gauge progress because when you complete a house then you unlock a new character. And despite the fact that you do get to unlock new characters, there's really nothing different. It's the same controls, they have the same bonuses, same speeds, there's just it's an aesthetic choice, and that's about it. So pretty much you could play this game as the first character 
get a taste for what it is and if you don't want to play it anymore you're not going to miss out on anything except just for different environments and slightly different obstacles. Now it sounds like I'm ragging on this game a little bit but it is actually a very cute game. Aesthetically it's really done well. The character designs are just very cute and squishy looking. Like I would love to have a plushie along the designs of the characters in this game because unlike their Uncanny Valley like Yak Back app counterparts, these ones are actually very cutely designed, which I appreciate. Also, the environments that they're in, although they don't make sense because none of it makes sense because you're on a road and you're jumping over stationary things while other moving things are coming at you full force and that just does not work in any way, shape, or form, but I will put that aside. But yeah, the designs, aside from the logical fallacy of it totally not being able to exist in real life, are very cute as well. They're super bright and poppy and just kind of interesting enough that you kind of pay attention to it, but not enough that it's distracting from what you're doing. Most of the time. Sometimes there are things that are distracting and it kind of will. Also, like I said earlier, this game is drenched in microtransactions, so if you want to make any real progress in this game fairly quickly, you're gonna have to shell out a lot of money or just play this game non-stop. If you have a really patient kid or if you yourself are a really patient person, then yeah, you'll be able to make quite a bit of progress throughout this game, but otherwise, eh, not so much. So just, again, with this game, please password protect your phone for purchases, because oh boy, you could rack up $100 within five minutes within this game. Which, shame on you devs a little bit for allowing that, and also shame on parents for not password protecting their phones in the first place. But, continuing off of that, for everything this game has, I'm going to have to give it about a 7 out of 10. It is really fun, it's nothing super like wild or spectacular. If you want something similar, you literally could just go re-download any of the Temple Run games and pretty much be playing the same thing. I've reviewed games like this before, this one really doesn't bring anything new to the table and it just seems like a cash in on a fairly popular App Store mascot. God, that's a weird sentence. But it's kind of true. It's not super interesting and I wouldn't highly recommend it, but it's still very playable and pretty fun and also very age appropriate for who its target demographic is. AKA not a college age bear, but I still had fun with it. So regardless of that, I still recommend it. If you want to check it out, make sure to look in the description for the links that I post to the download link, I guess, the iTunes store, Apple store, App store, Google store, I don't know what things are called, help. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to stick to the very end of this video to see more stuff that I've done. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>